Hello guys, I just want to come and show you what I'm cooking for dinner. We're doing smothered pork chop, green beans, and rice. And we're going to do some dinner rolls, so stay tuned. <music> First thing we're going to do is we're going to season our meat. We're going to season it with some seasoning salt. Uh, we're going to use some um, garlic powder, onion powder, and black pepper. Um, season to your likings. I already rinsed my meat off. I actually soaked mine in um, vinegar uh, for about 10 minutes, and then I wash it off, and then I um, pat it dry. And so the seasoning is going to be seasoned salt, black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and slap your mama seasoning. Um, after we get it seasoned, we're going to season one side. Then I'm going to use a fork to kind of blend it in. I don't really like touching the meat with my hands, so we're going to use a fork. And as I'm seasoning, I have my oil back there that we're heating up. So we're getting getting that oil nice and hot. And um, yeah, that's one side seasoning. So you're going to season it to your likings. It's personal preference. And this is how I make my uh, smothered pork chops. And I'm kind of uh, patting it dry. I get some of that uh, liquid that's uh, the water off of it from me uh, washing it down and preparing it. So we're going to flip that over and then we're going to season the other side with the exact same seasonings. And yeah, that's what we're doing. Season that with the exact same seasoning as the first side. And you can be as heavy or as light handed as you want to be. With your seasonings again it's personal preference it's what you like these are the seasonings i like so those are the seasonings i do but you can always do other seasonings like some people use sassoon i forget i have it sometimes because i really just started using it so i didn't use any of that and normally it um uh, gives it a darker color when you use that all right uh lastly we're putting that slap your mama on it and then where here's my flour we're gonna um Dip those pork chops in that flour and get it into the piping hot grease. All right, now we are uh, preparing my rice. We're going to do rice with this. Again, I said some other pork chops, green beans, rice, and we're going to do some dinner rolls. So what we're doing here is we're preparing that rice, and I use like a half a cup of rice, and I like to season my rice sometimes with uh, seasoned salt, onion powder, and black pepper. Um and garlic powder and i also sometimes put the uh, chicken bouillon powder in there as well um so i like the seasoning with that and then i will add some butter to it just give it some flavor when i'm doing the um some other pork chops that's what i like to do i don't always season my rice but this is a good way you can season your rice and i always like to buy the uh parboiled rice because i like loose rice i don't like sticky rice i can't cook the sticky rice so i always mess it up so i'm not good at cooking that but yeah, here I am. I'm putting my rice on the stove, preparing that, and we're going to get that started. Um, while my oil is heating up, I'm actually going to uh, get my onion prepared. I got a, uh, a whole onion and a half onion. We're going to actually add uh, some onion to our green beans. I'm going to add onion and a uh, potato to the green beans. So here we're just going to uh, prepare those onions, get them cut up nice and small for our... Uh, ready for the gravy and even with the gravy you can use like i like to use a whole onion so it's personal preference uh for as how much onions you want to add to your uh dish you know um personally that's that's what i like to do so that's what i do so again i'm chopping up those onions and i'm getting them prepared so right now we're just kind of preparing up everything bring you guys down a little bit so we can uh show you how to get those onions um prepared for our smother pork chops <laughs> smother pork chops um here i'm going to take you over to the stove so that that oil is probably just about right so we can um go ahead and start putting our oil i'm testing the oil with the back of the spoon got a little bit of flour on the back of the spoon so i can see how hot my oil is that's how i test my oil People do it different ways. Some people like to throw a couple of flour, you know, sprinkle some flour in there, see how it pop. And water, I, I don't recommend that because it does pop everywhere. And here we're just coating that um, pork chop with the flour on both sides. Get it good, nice, and coated. And we're going to put it in that grease. And you want that grease to be sizzling hot. Get them pork chops covered nice. I'm going to do two at a time. I have about uh, one, two, three, four six pork chops that I'm gonna do 
So we'll get those nice and cooted. And I did a survey over on Facebook to figure out what was going to be for dinner. I think I did what, smothered pork chops or fried pork chops? <laughs> and they chose smothered pork chops. So that's why I did the video. We did decided to go with the smothered pork chops. So if you was a part of that survey, I hope you liked the video. And comment on this video. <laughs> so I know that you guys uh, saw that I made the smothered pork chops for you. So here we're just gonna we let those pork chops uh, fry down. Um, you don't have to get them really dark because you are gonna smother them and that allows them to cook even more. So um, you can leave a little red in there if you like, but I kind of like to cook mine through so I don't see the red. Um, and then, like I say, you want to kind of get a crispy skin because that skin is what's gonna help that gravy make itself so again i'm just kind of coating the rest of my pork chops and getting those prepared so i'm gonna um get my green beans ready to have my rice on already and just keep an eye on those pork chops and i like them to be on the little brown side not too dark but like a medium brown color um and i also use kitchen bouquet i use the kitchen bouquet to make my gravy dark as well um so yeah we just kind of i'm gonna normally i don't stir the rice but because i put seasoning in it i stir it before it starts to get the cook to the consistency where you don't stir it so i just kind of stirred it just to get the um make sure my seasonings was mixed up in it and here i am preparing my pot for the green beans i'm using two cans of the i think that was a green giant and i do pull uh some of the water off of it uh, some people like to rinse them off. I didn't rinse these. I just poured a little bit of the juice off and we're going to get them seasoned as well. I do season them up because I like for them to taste pretty good. And I do use uh, fresh green beans from time to time, but today we're not. We're going to put some of the chicken uh, bouillon broth in there. We're going to add a little bit of seasoning salt, black pepper, and onion powder and garlic powder to this and also add our onions as well along with a few potatoes all right we check it that's nice and golden that's what color i want to get it that nice and golden color we're going to pull those out and add our other ones to the pot and i'm doing two at a time if you got a bigger pan you could do more but i just do two at a time And then I'm coating my other one so they will be ready to go in the pot as well. So let's move on along. We are going to add our onions to our green beans. Then um, just a few. I, you don't have to add onions. I do. Um, I like the onion taste. Not all the time I can uh, tolerate onions. But when I can, I do like to add it to my food. Here, I'm just flipping those pork chops over. And again, here are my potatoes. I just cut them up in uh, pieces. And we're going to cook that uh, the green beans and everything until... And I use some... Um, the bouillon that's in the jar. I'm not sure the name of it. But I think it's like for vegetables. It's in, And it's, it's brown. So, and it's like a, a creamy jelly kind and once you open you keep it in the refrigerator that's what i actually also put in my green beans as well and um we're gonna let it cook and i add a little butter to it at the end as well put the top on and we're gonna cook those green beans until those potatoes are actually tender fork tender all right here is my pork chops the second batch and i have one more batch to fry and then we'll be ready to get started with that um the gravy for the pork chops and these are I don't these are they I think these are center cuts pork chops they're not that thick sometimes center cuts can be kind of on the thick side you know you personal preference I like the more thin approach of pork chops because they um, are easier much easier to cook and faster to get done I just don't really like really really thick pork chops here I'm checking on my green beans. And again, like I said, I put that uh, 
the brown stuff is the seasoning that I use. I can't think of the name of that right now. But yeah, that's what I use in there to help give it some flavor. And again, you can season your food as much as you like or as less as you like. Um, I don't really use, I use seasoned salt. So I don't really use like a lot of salt salt. But if I use salt, I like to use the Himalayan salt or the, um, the, I think it's, um, I can't even think what the other salt is. It's like a rock salt, but it's not really rock salt. I can't think of the name of it, but I do like to use the Himalayan salt. When I do, uh, the pink Himalayan salt is what I like to use. All right, now we have all of those pork chops done and ready to go. So here I am going to pull the oil out. Most of it, I am going to leave a little bit in there so that I have some to fry my onions down. I'm also leaving the dribblings in there that's from the, me frying the meat. So you'll see that. And of course that pan is still hot. See those dribblings and the oil that I leave in that pot there? We're gonna leave that and then we're gonna put our onions in there and get this gravy started. Still making sure that you're keeping that pot hot. So here are my onions, that's a whole onion again. You add as much as you like or as less as you like. And I do want to cook my onions down. I like for my onions, to me, the darker they are, the, the better your gravy is gonna be and then uh, the darker your gravy a bit. So you want to kind of um, get those onions on the darker, crispier side, I guess you would say. So yeah, I do. Like I said, here's the kitchen bouillon that I use. And I don't use that because I don't really like light gravy. Um, I don't really think it has a flavor, but I do. It does help to enhance or darken your gravies. Um, sometimes when I make a sausage and gravy I will add a little bit because again I don't like white gravy for as that kind of meat but I'm okay when it comes to like alfredo sauce being white you know <laughs> it's a mental thing okay so that's my left over flour and I'm just gonna take that flour and pour it on my onions once I get my onions to the color and tenderness that I want <clears throat> I will use the rest of the flour that I use for smothering my um for uh, battering my pork chop. So I don't save any flour. You don't want to save that flour after you have used it on your raw meat. Because if you save it and want to use it later, you got bacteria that builds up. You don't know if the extra meat is left. The juices from the meat you used the time before. And it might be months before you go back to that flour. So don't save the flour. It is not uh, health. Health. A good healthy reason why you don't save flour so you want to use fresh flour flour each time you are frying any type of raw meat so again I'm just uh, you have to pay attention to your onions because you don't want to overcook them as well now here we're gonna put that um, the rest of the flour in there and if it's any raw meat or juices in that flour it's gonna cook down on the pot so the pot is the pan is hot enough to kill any bacteria that might be lingering that's why we you know, you don't want to save that flour. So um, I'm going to cook this flour down to get that rawness out of it. And again, if you need to add more oil, I keep my oil over there. And I just take a spoon and add more to it if you need to. Um, <clears throat> the more flour you use, the thicker your gravy is going to be. Um, I don't really know how much flour I use in that, to tell you the truth. It just was the leftovers from me find, frying the pork chop. It probably was a two-thirds cup of flour. I'm not sure again. And we're going to add some minced garlic. Minced garlic is actually, or garlic itself, it helps to, helps the flavor here. So you do want to um, season your onions and your flour. You want to season that flour. That's going to help intensify. That's why I don't heavy um, season my meat because I'm going to season the gravy as well. And if you over season it, it and then you got to season the gravy then you it's gonna be too over seasoned you know what i'm saying so you want to um just kind of season everything as you go along so here i'm adding my meat back to the pot and i got to get me a little piece just because i want to see what this pork chop tastes like so i'm gonna cut me a little piece off of here 
and taste it and then I'll put that in the pan and I'll eat it once it um once I smother it down so you gotta taste it and here I'm adding like a half a cup of water um just stirring that around seeing if I need and I always keep keep at least a cup of water because you can always add more water to it um as you go along you can add keep adding your water to it so I am going to add another cup of water because it's not enough for me. Um, how thick you want your gravy, again, it depends on your flour. And I'm actually adding, um, I think I'm adding cold water to this because I didn't want the flour to. Um, sometimes flour will clump up on you. But because I cooked it with the oil and onions, it does prevent it from clumping up when you add your water to it. But if you have to add uh, flour to your mixture after you've added the um, water, I suggest you make like a, a user um, a little bit in a cup, but make sure the water is cold and add your flour to your cup and kind of make a slurry, like add it by teaspoons or half a teaspoon. Here I'm adding the kitchen bouquet. See the color of it now? It's just going to darken it up. And I only add like half a cap of that. Um, so like with the flour again, you just want to add like a teaspoon or half a teaspoon to to your cold water and s stir it up, make like a slurry out of it and add that consistency to your pot. And then you can add more water directly to your pot after you have uh, got your slurry consistency right. So, you know, yeah. And I'm tasting that and it tasted pretty good. It was tasty, tasty. So yeah, that's going to be good. And you want to keep stirring. You want to kind of um, bring your pork chops from the bottom to the top. Um, again, you you can add more water to it. Um, depending on how thick you want it, you can add more flour to it. I'm adding some more water because I want mine to be a little bit more. And then again, season the gravy. Because I added water, it diluted my seasoning that I added before. So we're going to add a little more seasoning. <clears throat> Again, season as you go. You season each step, and then you're not over seasoning your food. Um, we are gonna let it cook down. I like to cook my pork chops until they're fork tender, so that's what we're gonna do. Let it cook till it's fork tender, and again, uh, keeping the meat off the bottom, making sure you're stirring it, uh, bringing the one from the bottom to the top. That's gonna be the key as well. So now we have everything on, and we're gonna make some dinner rolls I um, have some dinner rolls so here I'm again bringing that meat on the bottom to the top and I'm also making a mess on the stove <laughs> that happens when you're cooking <laughs> so we're keeping it stirred up and then we like I say bring the bottom to the top see how thick that gravy is and as it sits it's gonna thicken up so always remember that as well as you like Overnight, it's going to be thicker. As it cooled down, it's going to thicken up anyway. So we're going to, um, we're making sure it's not sticking to the pan. And like I say, rotating your meat out so everything has a chance to cook and get tender. That looks so delicious. And it's really not hard, you know. It's, this is an easy, pretty much 30, 45, no, I say about an hour meal to cook. Here I'm setting my stove because I am going to do some dinner rolls. They are, they're just the brown and serve dinner rolls. Yep, we're going to check that again. Making sure you keep a check on your pork chops. <clears throat> keep checking on your pork chops. I'm checking to see how tender they are. So that's going to determine how long you cook them. Because um, when they're simmering in the pot, because they're kind of like boiling, it's going to help to tenderize them. Again, getting those dinner rolls, I'm going to split them in half, split them down the middle, add a little butter, put them in the oven, I think for like 10 minutes, I think it said, I'm not even sure. Add a little butter in between them and stick them in the oven. Quick, simple, easy meal, easy peasy, no home bread, no homemade bread today, just some brown and serve uh, dinner rolls. Adding that butter to the top. <clears throat> I like to use, I can't believe it's not butter. I don't know which one I'm using now, but the spread, not the 
not the stick. You want the softer butter. It goes on your dinner rolls much better. And again, we're going to put these in the oven and cook them a little bit. Okay. So this week, um, I will do another post to see what we'll, we can do another video on. Or if you have some video ideas or something you want me to cook, let me know. We can do that too, you know. Um, this is like one of my favorite meals. Besides grits and fr uh, fried salmon, I think I'll do another. I haven't did one on the salmon croquettes in a while. So I may do another one on that. If y'all want me to do another video on that, let me know. Um, we have time. <laughs> or anything y'all want me to try. I think I'm going to try some um, blackbird pieces too. So that's a good one. I think I'm going to do the chicken, chicken one. Yep. All right, so we're setting the timer. I like to set my timer on my stove because a lot of times when I um, have a lot going on, I may just forget. So, yes, yeah, 10 minutes on the rolls. Checking those uh, pork chops again. And, it, hey, keep checking them. That's what you want to do, making sure they're not sticking to the pot, making sure you don't have to add some more liquid to it. Keep a check on your pork chops, all your food, period. You know why you cooking. I am adding a little bit more water. A little bit at a time you can always you if you add too much you gotta thicken it up so a little at a time is the best way to go just a little bit at a time so those pork chops are almost done my dinner rolls are done turning that oven off um feel like i turned the stove off too turn the stove off because those pork chops are ready to go as well adding a little butter to the top i'm using the stick but i am gonna cut that part off and then um put that those pieces on my porch on top of my biscuits i don't like to rub my bread and then you have that bread on the butter so we're gonna cut that piece off one after i rub it and then put the butter on top of the, the uh, dinner rolls my rice is done making my plate pork chops done bread done and the green beans we are done with that meal and again, if you guys, whatever you want me to make in the future, let me know. Comment. Tell me what to think about this video. And until next time, as usual, you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. Pork chops, green beans, rice, and dinner rolls. This was a great meal. And again, I did a survey to see which one. And this is the one y'all chose. Just what the pork chops. Again, bon appetit guys have a good one we will see you next time bye bye